Hey guys, I'm Sophia. So in my AP English class at AP Comp uh, in language, one of our units was focused on education and basically what comprises our public school education and ways that we can possibly improve it and areas that we consider to be the downfalls. So for my discussion today, I'm focusing on second language learning. Um, and specifically whether or not we start it too late within our current public school, public school system. So as we're all well aware, uh, American public school education places a great emphasis on the core subjects including math, science, language arts, and it's not until like sixth or seventh grade that learning a second language even becomes a thought or a requirement. So, um, my first question for you is, what does this model for education imply about the American mindset or way of life? In other words, the fact that we're not required to start thinking about learning another language till we hit puberty. Uh, what, what does this say about our academic kind of uh, priorities? I would say that it reflects an American mindset in the sense that it implicitly values American ways over other ways of doing things because we keep English as really the only language anyone's exposed to, um, but also that there's not really any need to learn about other languages or cultures, and like more implicitly that there's no value exactly. to like experiencing those other things. So it's very American-centric you would say? Yes, definitely. And almost as though, why do you need to learn a different language if you already know English? Uh, what, what would you say that has something to do with globalization? Um, I think that in a backwards way it does because even if globalization is occurring at rapid speeds, it's almost like America responds by going into their shell more. Uh, because we have such value over the American mindset versus trying different ways um, without acknowledging they could actually be better or useful. I like that. Um, how do you think uh, people of other nations may view us and our education system because of this format? Like if you were, if you were uh, someone living in South Korea. South Korea, yeah. How would you how would you view uh, ah, maybe that's not the best example. Um just yeah, small language. Just to kind of piggyback off of Nadia a little bit, because we're so self-centered and English is the best thing, it's the only thing, other countries kind of, you know, stick their noses up a little bit because they all learn four or five different languages. Exactly. So why shouldn't we? Because are we better than them? Why should we, you know? Exactly. And that's kind of what I was getting at because in European countries, they place such a great emphasis on learning in many languages at such a young age that it really calls into question our priorities. And so uh, my next question, um, How do you, oh, how could we present a less threatening image of our nation in terms of our educational uh, priorities? Holly? I mean, just staying with the language theme, if we learned more languages sooner and we were more yeah. diplomatic with other countries. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Nani? I think it's also less about our outward politics where, oh, we help this nation or that nation or are friends with these people and actually present our society as one that is interested in other countries and like wants to go to other countries, I feel like there's a very stigmatized view of Americans as not wanting to go travel besides for like the luxury of travel rather than actually to see other places and experience other cultures. Um, so maybe like incorporating that into schools where children take a vested interest in other cultures because they're brought up exactly. with that curiosity would make our society as a whole start to behave that way. Yeah, I like the idea of curiosity being something that is not um, used enough with the American mindset because it's almost as though we expect to like just give off Americanness and not take in anything, even though we're supposed to be like a melting pot and everything. 
Um, so, uh, okay. Um, what are some of the problems with introducing the second language learning at the middle school age? Can you think of any specific issues that that might cause? Well, well it's harder to learn. Exactly. You're older. Yeah, I heard somewhere that like your ability to pick up on accents and stuff after your brain has developed becomes really it like diminishes somehow. That's kind of what you're getting at, right? Yes, and then also in middle school, everybody's so self-conscious of what they're saying. So if I'm trying to pronounce something in Russian and I'm like, uh, 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 exactly. everybody's staring at me. So. Yes. I think also like what you're saying. I took a class on linguistics where they said. Babies, when they're born, can distinguish all the sounds of other languages, but once they have enough exposure to their own, they start to lose the distinction of those sounds. Um, like, they did a study between Japanese and English babies where uh, distinguishing, like, R and L sounds. Um, but also, like Molly was saying, at the middle school age, there's self-consciousness, but also diversity is not something that's valued, and part of that is because of how we're brought up up to that point. So then all of a sudden introducing this new diversity, which maybe all of a sudden highlights the people of different cultures, can make things very difficult in the middle school experience where it's like, oh, these kids are just now learning about other languages and that's all this time when people notice like, hey, your skin is brown, you also look different than me. Exactly. Um, and it becomes like a mockable thing, I guess. It's almost like a twofold problem because we have on one level the self-conscious nature of teenagers, preteens, and then just the fact that our brains can't hold as much at that age as maybe we'd be capable of learning at a younger age and mastering. So um, thank you, those are some excellent insights. Um, so what do you guys think? When would be, in your opinion, the best time to introduce second language learning? Like if you guys were at the head of the school board and you made these decisions, not um, Well, I know it's different. I went to a Montessori school, so we had language when I was very young, like even oh, in preschool and kindergarten. And I loved it partly because obviously your brain is wired for that at the time, but also it was like, I knew there were other languages around, just no one ever talked to me about them. So when I went to middle school, I was much more prepared for Spanish than everyone else. Partly because my brain had been listening to it, but also, I mean, I of course am of a different culture, but I was also much more interested in other cultures at that point because I'd had Spanish teachers who told me about like Cinco de Mayo and Dia de los Muertos and things like that. Um, so it wasn't this new thing where I looked at it as foreign and like scary. It was comfortable to me at that point. And do you think that that prior experience with being immersed in that language made you more outgoing when you got to that age? like in middle school and you had to start doing it in public school? I think that that can be more specific to personality, but I think um, I was definitely more comfortable with people who were different from me, partly because I had already started to have to understand that like there are so many differences between people and you are not exempt. You are very different from everyone else too. So it didn't come as like this shock that, oh, we're all American, but we're different. It was like, I thought that that was normal. Um, not like that that made things worse if you were American and different from other Americans. Yeah, and that it seems sense. like a good and positive kind of Yeah, definitely. Have, you know, especially at that age. Yeah. Um, so we'd say kind of like around five or six years old. Do you think that it might be that the that say if you were to introduce second language learning, reading and writing at the same time, kids are learning to read and write English, do you think that would conflict and cause some potential problems for understanding and comprehending English, possibly? I think there could be some barriers there just with different alphabets, like we were talking about exactly. Spanish, that's mostly the same, yeah. but in Russian, some of the letters are backwards, so uh -huh. the English capital R is a capital I, but backwards in Russian. So it's it's confusing. Yeah. Now, at my level, I can't imagine being uh. five trying to write that, so. That's, I definitely think it's confusing because you're learning a new language, but I think, especially at that time when your brain is so wired to pick up language, we can't even remember what it's like when you could hear a word once and repeat it and all of a sudden integrate it into what you're saying and you're so much more willing to experiment with language that I feel like that's almost the time 
to bombard you because your brain, whether you want to believe it or not, is more capable of adapting to those things. But also, I think so much about how if I had really been immersed in a language at a young age, I would understand grammar exactly. so much more in like a practical way than just the rules because learning other languages is how I've come to actually know like rules of grammar. Um, so I think I probably could have learned to write and speak English better than I can now because I would have understood like the construct of language. I think also like it might help to understand the cumbersome nature of English grammar because I don't think you ever really notice that until you see other <laughs> languages and how simple the semantics operate. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, if by the time American students enter high school, they were to be a fluent language, fluent speaker of a different language than English, do you think this would present a change in society? And how so? I think that it could help some students in the sense that more communities could develop than the ones that do, like students who speak the same language could connect over that and also find some kind of support. It may also create other divisions, but I think if this were in an idealistic wor world, all of these students were having some form of other language, I think it might encourage learning of other languages and understanding other cultures, but also kind of like taking away the fear of being different and the fear that like, oh, if I learn another language, I'm un-American, it would become much more normalized and almost exactly. like have a higher value on it because everyone would have that skill. It wouldn't be something to like make fun of. And I can't help but feel as though it would make people more willing to travel and to embrace the idea of immersing themselves in other cultures. Definitely. And I, it's like, I feel like sometimes Americans fall into the trap of feeling as though there's nowhere better that they could possibly be, and it's kind of a, it's it's a not a good mindset. I I don't think. <laughs> um, do you think it's possible to truly learn and understand a language in the classroom setting? And if if so, you know why why or why not? Because, I mean, a lot of people will suggest that you don't truly learn a language until you're thrown into the culture and can understand the nuances of accent and conversational things. So do you think that that's a problem for like, second language learning? Tommy? I think that it's possible. I think truly is a word that throws me off, where it's like I don't know what truly learn and understand might uh, be. Yeah. But I do think it's possible to, like, master a language to the point of being able to speak and carry on conversation. I don't think the classroom setting implies you can't incorporate culture, exactly. you can't have a teacher who talks about accents or exposes you to native speakers through other forms of technology, but I think ultimately if pursuing language in the classroom setting, like you said, it would hopefully encourage that travel which would then make the language like solidify from what was taken in the classroom because I don't know that you can have one without the other. I think both are part of the experience of actually learning a language. But I think the classroom is equally as valid, if not more for some people, than people who are just brought up with another language. Because in a classroom, at least there's structure, whereas exactly. at home, it has the possibility of falling off and you never pick it up again. So it calls into question where language ends and culture begins and vice versa. Definitely. Well, I like that you brought up the falling off at home because you can go get Rosetta Stone or something exactly. and attempt to learn it. So I do like the accountability of going to class, but I do think it is what you put into it will be what you get out of it. Because you can go to class every day and not do the homework or not really pay attention, but you're in class every day. Gotcha. So. All right, um, let's see what else. Um, what if, as a set part of, this is kind of a silly question, but it, it you know, calls into your mind some what if, as part of secondary education, students were required to study abroad? <laughs> it's very open-ended. Yeah, I think it's hard because that requires like money and all yeah. that jazz. But the requirement of it, I think, would scare a lot of people. They may not want to do it. But I think if that became, like I said, a more normalized thing, everyone was learning other languages, 
I think ultimately, if every person is given the chance to travel when they're young enough to like develop that curiosity, it can only benefit. Um, yeah. Especially if it's through a school system where they can really like cater the experience to the student, um, I think it'd be valuable. It just may be implausible. Yeah, it's a pretty idealistic kind. Be great. Of thing. I, I kind of wanted just to throw it in there to see like if in a perfect world that this were a possibility, how would that kind of change the way education seems and. I think yeah. initially there'd probably be a fight against that kind of thing because a yeah. lot of people wouldn't want it, but I think it would eventually be a great thing if it was yeah. possible. Um, all right. Um, do you guys foresee any possible downsides to introducing second language education at an earlier age than we do now? Not necessarily at the kindergarten age as we spoke of before, but like say, second or third grade? Nadia? I think like we were talking about, it can get confusing to an extent, and sometimes parents especially might think, oh, this is an extra burden. My kid has to learn another language. Um, and it depends, are all the kids learning the same language? Do they have the same teacher? Um, so I think there are definitely possible downsides. It just depends on how the education system decides to integrate that into like elementary education. I think if they do it tactfully, it would be fine. Um, but I do think there would be a certain age where like if you just start in third and fourth grade, that might, might be more jarring than if you introduced it in like kindergarten exactly. or first grade. Yeah. All right, well, that about does it. Thanks for participating, you guys.